há três anos, três anos e meio. Aqui já está muito antes, é tiro, aqui é tiro, aqui foi um tiro de 12, tem aqui que foi um tiro de 45, e tem mais umas três ou quatro pelo corpo aí que não dá para mostrar. E como, como você, ah, como é isso que aconteceu? Foi na troca de tiro. Isso é normal? É, pra gente que tá na profissão é totalmente normal. This is uh, Jason Cohn, director of Mountain Ball, and you're tuned into uh, First Magazine. Uh, Jamaica. Well, the kidnapper was killed. He was uh, killed in a shootout with the police after he found out his drug distributor had been stealing from him. Um, he shot the guy in the head, killed him. His wife went to fight with him, shot her as well. She ended up in the hospital. Uh, the police went chasing after him. Um, he killed supposedly two police officers in the in the in a chase. Uh, he was shot in the shoulder and in the gut. Uh, and when he got put in the ambulance, when he got by the time he got to the hospital, um, supposedly the story I heard was that he had a third bullet in the back of his neck by the time he got to the hospital. So um, Jamil, the police officer, has been uh, kicked off the of the force of the police force. Um, I don't know exactly the exact charges, but I have a. I think it had something to do with violence in the, while on duty. Um, Jada Rabalio is today more powerful than he's ever been. Um, he's trying to regain control of a new Sudam um, that's taking shape in the north. And uh, what else? That's basically, you know. And oh, um, the Mr. M character moved out of Brazil. He moved uh, to another country. I'm going to call you something. I don't know. Tell me. Mr. M. Mr. M? I don't know if that sounds film-like, I don't know. You know, after this interview, I have to go home. I have to get into my car, I have to drive here, through these avenues, and I have to manage to get home. So, there's a risk there. Every stoplight, there's a risk of a guy with a gun appearing out of nowhere and robbing you. Well, for, that was a really typical story. I mean, you know, this is a girl who's um, led, led a, privi privilege, a privileged life in Sao Paulo. Um, you know, and, you know... It happens every single day. You know, it's it was a super super typical story. Um, she was, I mean, it's it's sympathetic and it's really really sad, but that's it's the reality of living in Sao Paulo that you know you're at risk when you when you have so much more than what most people have. He came out with a glass of juice, all cheerful, and said, "Good morning." I said, "Pô, você como você conseguiu dormir? Você cortou minha orelha ontem. Ele tava ótimo." And I said, how could you get any sleep? You cut my ear off yesterday. I cried a lot and they didn't want the neighbors to hear. So the TV was on at maximum volume 24 hours a day. And I remember when the programs were over, those vertical colored lines come up on the screen and that terrible noise. A semana Alfred Hitchcock na televisão. So I was lucky enough to get the whole week of Alfred Hitchcock. I watched the birds the same day they cut my first ear. That night I dreamt that a bird had bitten my ear off. I still have the same dream today. Alfred Hitchcock. Nunca mais quero ver um filme dele. I never want to see Alfred Hitchcock again. <laughs> uh, I'm writing a feature film now that, that takes place in Southeast Asia. Um, it's kind of a like a western. 
not not right now, but who knows? You know, I'm just trying to figure out the next one. Tem, tem um 10 filhos. Tem um 10, né? Que tá indo pra 10, né? Que a mulher tá grávida, né? Tem então, um 9. A mulher tá indo pra... Tá, tá vendo mais um, né? E é, continuaram, pode parar. Entendeu? Isso aí é... É o progresso do Brasil, né? Quem sabe um dos meus filhos pode ser o presidente do Brasil e direitar. É boa. 